Oh, you know we will, Alan. We're going to talk so much. It's almost like it's a profession for us. Gambit, what a nice little pickup. Obviously, in the in the uh, in the mindset of Alan. Ha! Chen, last pickup. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then boom, also the panel was uh, leaning towards it, the leaner pickup for the mid. Yeah, I like look, it. Look, looking, looking good, giving a really good matchup again. I, I think more importantly for me at least is that it feels like Boom is just feeling themselves, right? They saw that first pick bat coming. They'd obviously prepped for it. They got the giggles going and immediately the Oracle troll. Um, <laughs> this is to me like the most important predictor of success is that uh -huh. if, you're feeling, if you're feeling good, if you've got faith in your draft and your teammates, you're just more likely to win. Mm -hmm. And perhaps the draft in terms of late game win condition would favor Gambit, that Morphling will inevitably become a problem. You gotta figure that Boom has that ability to get, like they can still easily win this game. Like Oracle Troll is sick. Mm -hmm. He's like 15 seconds of invulnerability on the hero. And um, Lina with a shaker, they have a couple supports. The only thing that might change things is that Chen pick that Alan's such a big fan of. Your uh, support duo has a hard time dealing with creep harass and early push so will you get run over by the army that is the question that that is a that is a very good question and yeah, you don't really have fantastic answers early on like this is actually, it's actually got to be the most lackluster early level support combination we can see from boom yeah you got disrupt the thunder strike which was like for a long time it was like that powerhouse of like i can harass somebody out of the lane with this mm. but just how much work is that going to do? I'm also interested to see just how much success Shashlo is going to have on this hero. We asked him to have something that's going to be a little bit more active. Uh, we have definitely received. Mm, uh, he, has, he has the Bat Rider, but does it work well in this game? I'm not so sure. Tobes, a core Bat Rider against an Oracle never feels great, I, I gotta say. Um, and this is partly why I think uh, they won the opener. Pretty reliably handled. Nice Oracle. Shaker. Oof, just <laughs> snatches it. It's close, but it's fine. Shaker yeah. just wants to fish and block the wave anyway. He actually has to do it from the high ground. Yeah. Oops. Missed him. <laughs> Only was able to hold one back. That was actually just because of Oracle. Throughout yeah. the Fortune's end. Actually made him throw it from the high ground where he couldn't uh, block him against trees. But yeah, looking towards the mid lane. That's what, uh, that's what the panel wanted to see. And we see just how this matchup goes. GPK, can you make the lane matchup work? Mr. Static Link. Actually got more on that link than I thought he would. Makoto definitely understands this matchup. And you know, when you get the last pick against the Razor, it's why we don't typically see it picked up in the opener, right? Because if you're planning on going mid with it, it's very easy to just pick something like Alina that I'll have no problem. And without that laning advantage, Razor just does feel at times a little mediocre. Yeah. Uh, bottom, this lane is the one to watch, I think. You want to be able to pressure Dream under under tower if you can, like the first couple of levels, it gets a lot harder as he gets level three, level four. Courier, that's dead. Radiance Courier. That's not where FNG wanted to have that, but uh, he's got a lot to micro. Not really, actually, not yet. Um, <laughs> um, I'm also liking this defensive ward that, that Boomer put next to the tier one tower in mid lane, just yep. to the north of it. It's the Shaker it, ward, right? We've talked yep. about it a lot. Yeah, but this, it's kind of funny because Shaker walked through and put his own Observer Ward down mm. next to the outpost inside the Dire Jungle. So there's a lot of information being given. A straight TP, like Makoto <laughs> doesn't even delay it. <laughs> that's uh, that's quick, back to a good solid position, just wasting the time of the Earth Shaker. Nice time, gets both CS with that stun and the Archer, my man. Uh, and yeah, as you said, they spotted that ward. So Keskin immediately drops a sentry, takes out what Shaker had just planted. Um, and notably, Bada, I love what FBZ has been doing. He's just toggling that buckler on and off to try and mess with the morph CS. And it's part of the reason Dream is still only at 4-1. Like, it's so annoying to deal with. Double damage. I think they want to try and do something about Shashlo. It's been creep skipping out. Like, obviously got a hell of a lot of levels, but no Firefly available. Oh, Kez Q getting the body blocks on him. Got that early slow, so that helps out. And Shashlo, so low on life, they need just one more attack, and they're gonna get it in from the Oracle. And that big. will be first blood being spilled by mid lane. That's the bigger one, Nexus wow. Vampire. Got the Fierger block, and GPK utilizing that double damage from the bottom river. Surprised Makoto got caught by that. He knew that there was a DD active on the Razor and just gets himself blocked, as you said. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't have an Observer Ward watching the bottom side. Like, they only have one watching the north, and that's where the vision of Gambit kind of pays off a little bit more. 
I suppose. Actually, wow, this lane's going a lot better for Raze than I expected. 15 and 8, yeah, this is... the 8-2. I thought this was going to be much more Lina favored, but so far so good. A big part of that, though, is GPK is doing a great job keeping lane control on his hill. He, uh, if you keep it here, you can actually just crush the mid lane. If it's on Lena Hill, you can't really pressure or get a link off at all. Thanks for the line, Toby. Just so I'm here for you, man. Keep it, keep I'm here it there. for you. Another great fidget block. SQ needs to help out somehow. But what do you do? What's the support here from an Oracle? He has to throw out the quick end, and GPK, a fairy fire, bottle charges. <laughs> Rikodo like, oh, just hey, running away. Say, please attack me instead. Disruptor will arrive. He has a spare point if he wanted to glimpse, but they're not going to. And I will say, this is that thing about Shaker that we've talked about a lot. When you play these two ranged, squishy, more five-esque supports, you don't have that same late game uh, impact with the blink and uh, being strength, but... Look at the TP out. Troll Warlord has to go back to the tier yeah. twos. He had five sticky napalm yeah. stacks on him, and without the Oracle supporting exactly. him, he can't break him free. Yeah, and Shaker, like, you just get so much more done in the early game, right? Only level one, but you're forcing both supports to just camp mid to help out GPK. Yeah. Or uh, Makoto, rather. It's like, se secure the runes, make sure he's got that, and... Uh... Yeah, and top now, like, this is scary, because Shaker now can look to rotate top with no Oracle there. That's an easy kill on Troll. He has three or four stacks on him. Going all or over again, another mid. Fissure block. Sentry's down. Yep, underneath the tower, you don't care if you're going to lose him. Wait, did he ward in Sentry? Oh, yeah, he, uh, he... Oh, denies oh. the ward. What a beast. Huge. Wow. Gambit, turn it up. Chen, 19p. Wow. <laughs> this Chen, I will say, the Chen pick, though, is Nas. It's already paying huge dividends. You can see, check out this jungle. <laughs> FNG. He's got the wolf creep. Wait, who was the person that actually said like? Gonna finish um, off the smasher. How, how uh, you need to add an extra bar to the um, to the rankings? Like, so it's not mm. just it's not just core support, mid, off. Like, you need a jungle role for that's just for yeah. legions and profits. I, yeah, I'd, I'd love to identify those players. So I could pre-report them in my games. Oh. <sighs> I mean, that's one thing, oh, gosh, I, I hope one day we have a, a report system that actually results in real punishments. It's very simple rules. Run down mid, ban one week. Run Thought down mid again, I ban one month. Thoughts Run again, forever. Thoughts on Smurfs? Smurfs? Um, <laughs> Consider I, considering a lot of top tier players actually have Smurfs and have publicly used them as well. I mean, people also publicly boost accounts and then sell them, but, you know. I, until that gets changed, I'm not going to really worry about smurfing. In fact, I'd argue that people smurfing to then sell accounts is arguably the bigger problem. But... That's a whole different kettle of fish, right? Yeah, we're, we're opening up the barrel. We'll, we'll let people like Alan There's debate that. There's a lot that. of rotten fish in that barrel. But let's talk about what GPK is about to do. He's got some uh -huh. stacks up. He's controlling this bottom rune. He's got both sides. Misses that one, unfortunately. But he's got a triple on the other. Camp to his up left. They're going to attempt this again over on Shashlo. Excess Vampire is going to have to get the perfect Fissure block, just keeping Dream away from the Bat Rider. While well, they drag the Creep Wave over too. And okay, Shasha, maybe you overstayed your welcome. Just because one Fissure happened doesn't mean you get to survive this. They can glimpse him back all the way up to the top of the hill. And Shashlo will be brought down by, in fact, Kenskute. Uh, his second kill, having both of the ones from Boom ID. It's a very passive game so far, but man, uh, I swear, GPK, he's so farmed every single game. 43-17, and he still hasn't taken that huge stack up left. He's, again, top net worth, much like he was in the previous game, but... And, and he's going to go for the more aggro build on this Razor. The Yule's first into what I can only imagine will be a BKB. I love that build, especially with the Shaker to play around. <laughs> man, I love watching uh, also on bottom lane, just a little side thing. Like, Morphling's, like, net worth is... Uh, He's actually 300 behind that of the Centaur. But when he's uh, edgy edged up and he tries attacking FBZ, mm. he loses so much yeah. life with just his normal attacks. That's just a strength morph just to stand in the lane. You know, Still so many heroes playing around this mid lane. Now, that's a good fissure block. Uh, Keskut, a little bit of trouble. He has to wait for it to, to end. So he can walk away, yeah, not gonna happen. That's a very ambitious fairy fire. <laughs> <laughs> always always hold on to belief. Uh, I mean, so far, it's going pretty good for Gambit, but it's really Boom's timing when their supports hit six that they, they actually enter the game. Uh, Disruptor mm -hmm. Oracle don't really accomplish much until then, and the Shaker has had more impact by himself than the two of them combined. Top lane. 
Dreamer Cell's in some danger here. I would have maybe liked an earlier point in Flame Break on the bat, but after they nerfed the burn to two seconds at level one, I guess maybe the one point isn't as worth it anymore. Just for the bounce back, maybe you get a stun off it and hand the lasso. Good rotation down the bottom lane. And there's a Laguna Blade ready to go. FBZ just needs to get the aggression from Dream. Dream has already shown a couple of times he's very willing to waveform the wave, uh, just trying to push it back out again against the Centaur. Yeah, this is a heads-up play by Dream. There's no Lina showing. You got to be a little spooked. He's an experienced Morph player. Oh wait, as oh, now. <laughs> if only. <laughs> if only. You need to wait a little longer. There's no Observer Ward. There's nothing that actually scouts this one out. In fact, the obs they have down for Gambit right now is in front of Roshan. But this is still fine for Lena. I've seen her, like, she's been farming up triple stacks inside the jungle, prepped by those two supports that moved over. Now Stampede forward, AES, very low on life, and Kids has got the nuke available to get the kill. So now Dream herself turns on the Whirling Axes, and with the nets, the holds. Joshlo can't escape either, and the Troll Warlord. Oh my god, he's going Battle Fury build wow. as well. I, I, I was wondering if he'd actually yeah. do, like, we've seen, like, Diffusal Blades and, and such. Uh, I, I don't know how I feel about that one. Of all heroes in Dota, it's again one that can utilize Crystallis. I've had someone try and send me spreadsheets on the math about how Echo Saber is actually the best item on Troll. I don't know if I buy that, but I'm not a huge fan of the Battle Fury. I think like Diffusal, Crystallis, BKB in some order, you just end up more slot efficient and your overall damage output is higher. Plus, you really want to go late, late game against the Morph. You can, but it's going to require like that fourth, fifth item and a slight edge in the net worth department. You're also playing against a Razor. Just gonna link you. I think fighting earlier might be better, but we shall see if this pays off. Already oh, a mech smoke. on FNG, by the way. They're smoking, they're coming. They want to try and have a battle for uh, for the runes. Making sure the outpost is secured, but uh, Shashlo, can they get close enough to him? He knows the spidey senses. Yep. I like that, just retreating back to the high ground. Ends up just being a two-for-two two trade off. Centaur's actually the one who has to start his TP. He cancels it. Realizing the Morphling was right next to him and the damage from the Razor. I don't know if he actually needed to cancel. Like, the Morphling doesn't have a stun. Yeah, but he can't know that. Yeah. He could have technically switched into the Centaur and then stunned him, but you are. I, I get what you're saying. Yeah, that's true. He does have that. Oh, uh, the FNG with a mech wraparound. Literally naked mech, <laughs> but with a wolf creep. That's, that's, that's how Chen's, heal up. Yep. That is how Chen's run. And this is this is how you do it. And you just provide the auras. Up your team stay alive up top. Troll all. Oh, yeah. gotta be careful. Oh, Trying goodness. Trying to track a charge load. Dream's going to arrive. Well, he axes. He does strength morph his way through this. Where's the extra support? It's coming nice. actually from ES. That's uh, thanks to Stampede. Troll Wall looking to get back to the tier one tower. Still got a lot of sticky napalm charges on him, but nice. no Firefly available for the Bat Rider to keep the chase going. Yeah, really well done. They forced the TPs though. That's so heads up by Gambit. You can tell they are a little off in that last game, missed their timing pretty hard, but they're they're a formidable lineup. And I like that they pursue just enough to force the reaction and then right away turn around. Bot's already up on Shacklow. He's just gonna continue to try and cut waves, farm, accelerate. Makes it very annoying for Troll because you can't really chase him down as we just witnessed there. Uh, and bottom. FBZ, I'm going to try and push this tier one. Should be able to grab it, no problem. You have a Disruptor ult, you never want to TP into that. That's a sure way to just lose. But they trade off mid tower for it. I don't know mid if that's and top. worth. Mid and top for Oof. just the bottom tower. It's, and Morphling's getting free space up on the top lane. Top two net worths are the Razor and the Morphling by quite a decent yeah. margin. We've already got our Yules up on the Razor. It will be the BKB next item. I like this choice. Gambit's mid game is going to be so powerful. and. You're not really on the same sort of clock either because you have a morph who, with Wolf Creep with the Asha, he's hitting for 200 plus. It's 11 minutes into the game. Yeah. That's what I was wondering too, like how FBZ would try and itemize. Like, how does he try and keep his team alive aura wise? Uh, like, we would play at the Centaur once before. And in fact, uh, that was against Asta, I believe it was. And he went blink first. They tried to get him being aggressive. Didn't work. Gambit's going to take the tier 2 tower up on the top. Look at the map. It's huge now for them. Vampires moving forwards. This feels like Makoto just been shut down. Well, Laguna Blade out and ES down. It's a level five shaker. And it's like if he has any support there, he's just going to survive. Bottom lane, you have a hood up on the Centaur, but he's still a ways away from the Blink Dagger. And once again, I liked it. I still sort of do, but I, I these double support duos, right? The, the Oracle Disruptors, the Rubik disruptors or liches or what have you. It just feels underwhelming, and especially in games when you fall behind. Mm -hmm. 
just yep. can't get into the action. And yeah, sure, you know, Earthshaker's died a couple of times, but inevitably he'll have a Blink Dagger and be very useful. Yeah. And he already has, just by securing rotations and positioning around the map. Yeah, but I, I'm also remembering like a lot of the games we've seen already from Oracle during this tournament. Like you, you get your one jump and you think you're good, but one man that can just stand and fight. If you're able to make it the Troll Warlord, if he can be this big piece, and maybe this is the reason why you're looking at the Battle Fury yeah, as well. Like you just want him to be that 40 minute uncontrollable beast where the Disruptor <laughs> as well as the Oracle is just like, I'm gonna keep this guy alive, everyone else do your own thing. That, that's assuming Gambit can don't apply the pressure, but this game's different. They're gonna have a blink on bat in about four or five minutes. You have a Chen. You have a Razor with Yules going straight BKB after and Dream with the Yasha E Blade. You just blow up this Oracle. You'll run at him with the creep army. Mm -hmm. The Battle Fury is nice, but without a BKB, if Dream Assault runs in, gets linked into Yules, that's it. He's he's done for. And meanwhile, the rest of Gambit can focus on the support duos or the Lina. After that, where's the damage? I'm not disagreeing with you, but this is also like if the pressure isn't enough. Like well, right now, I would say if Gambit doesn't apply the pressure, but I I have to believe they've <laughs> learned from that previous game, uh -huh. and they're gonna use this smoke that FNG's got in his pocket quite soon. Perhaps you just go down bottom and push, right? Top, you've got a ward, you've already killed both structures. So in theory, you just shove down bottom. It's not really like there's any D push up yet for Boom. And they've seen the Demon Edge. They know Troll isn't looking to fight. Mm -hmm. He's looking to keep that farm. They're trying to keep also a little bit of extra control of the of the die jungle. But the one observer ward that got planted down by Gambit is actually in such a fun position. Uh, just south of the normal yep. hill they like to use. So it's not going to get dewarded. No one's putting a ward, uh, a sentry down for that. Dyer's bottom tower is under I think. Mm, yeah, you're right. I yeah, do it's, it's all out of range. Everything is out of range. So the blink dagger for FBZ might be an interesting go time as well for Boom. Like we saw this in, in game yes. one. Like, when are you ready to fight? Like, what's going to be that timing when they they, they, they then want to get on the front lines? You do have to disrupt the storm up. You've got uh, you've got your false promise, uh, stampede, escape in and out. Like, there's there's a lot of things for Boom mm -hmm. to work with. And if if they had that confidence from game one, that outplayability that we have seen from them against Gambit, like they just need something that's going to give them the confidence to jump, and that's going to be the blink dagger for the centaur. Yep. And he's getting closer. He's at 1,800 but, right now. But the support shaker of Excess Vampire with zero kills is about to pick his up. When your yes. four is beating your three, you're never really feeling great. And look at the positioning they have as well. Shacklow's just straight up stealing camps. Grabs a van brace for his trouble. Oh, Although, yeah, oh no. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> that's, that's, hey, Not like this. I meant to be able to fly. Why can't I glide? Can there be a glide function on this one? Kezq just lost his courier. Oh, uh -huh. Dreamer sells so close. I want it. Walk up the ramp. Walk up the ramp. No, don't walk up the ramp. That's a bad. He's gonna no. He's gonna drag him to the high ground himself. One second of firefly. Oh goodness. Now the whirling axes. He just puts him on the, What are you doing? Puts him on the hill. Puts Keep him on. over the what? hill. No, back up on the hill. Centaur's gonna be nearby. Stampede for disruptor in the name hood can get the ball as well as the storm out. Shashlo as well as FNG. They're both caught inside of this one, and they're both gonna go down with Lena rotating so, so, so quickly in. Oh, that boy. is such a strange sequence of events. There's no any that happens if the bat doesn't get the neutral item drop. And then, you know, it's so tempting. He's like, wow, Troll's just running at me. I got to put him on the high ground. Let's try and kill him, guys. But the rest of Boom has showed up. And the double stun, double disruptor ult combo lands two kills. But a lot of space for Dream there. A lot of space for GPK. Both these players just farming up. Mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's pretty much Blink Dagon now. For Centaur, like you just got that fight without actually having to have mm. the blink dagger. That's that for me like spells the the trouble because this is this is gonna be the big test for Gambit. If they can weather the next two yep. engagements from Boom and have even an even trade off or a slightly bad trade themselves, I'm gonna be yeah. more down your line of Gambit's looking good. I will say though, I don't know what the hell happened to Shacklow's game. He is <laughs> zero four and zero. BT's first and, and nothing else after. And just yeah, he he's just not having the game impact you would hope for. It is a difficult matchup, though, right? You're playing against an Oracle, so it's definitely easier said than done to uh, have uh, something to make things happen. Morph yeah. almost at that E-Blade. They might look to hunt middle, but the Blink Dagger is prepared. It's, it's the Centaur. Hello, Chen. Uh, Observer Ward gets planted down, same with the Sentry, but... Blink on Shaker. Yeah, and they're going to flag the fact that something went up there, so you know a Sentry Ward will be coming out sometime yeah. soon from Boom. I will say... I. 
Uh, I've seen this bot's first build on Batrider a few times. I think it's much better when you're ahead and you can just, you don't have as much threat. But in a game like this, it just feels like now, you know, you want to blink desperately. Otherwise, you're just a creep farmer. And but even it, then, it works you're playing well historical. It's just that incra like crazy movement speed, right? And sure. uh, now they're able to at least get one catch out. It'll be Disruptor all the way down south. But Boom is still farming up. Remember that Battle Fury is completed over on the Troll Warlord. His farm is going to escalate. Yeah. You can see by the talent stream went for, he kind of understands his role here. Going for the waveform range over the agility level 10 because his job is going to be to E-Blade blast this Oracle, the Lena, the Disruptor. Kill one of these squishies, the rest of your team then free to do as they please. GPK, all you've got to do is get a link on this troll who, as you said, don't know if I agree with the Battle Fury, but in <laughs> 20 minutes, all of a sudden, he'll look like a genius because this troll will skyrocket to the top of the network charts. They're going to go for the Lena. Fourth. Got Echo him. Slam, Blink Reveal. Lena needs a little bit more time, so defensively, Yule Sept are up, and now Centaur is his own hoofstop off. They've got to keep the Razor up in the air, and Volley stun up, and then Excess Vampire wow. will do the work with the False Promise. Kids Cute got there in time, and now GPK and Excess Vampire, they thought they had themselves this kill. Support will arrive in the form of Shashlo, but who's going to go on? Urshay gets the Fissure off, but there's nothing else to come from. The E Blade pop is there, but it only ends up killing off Hyde. Dream has to have a big play. Troll Warlord too deep. Going for the Whirling Axes and then finishes the job. And it looks like GPK will be able to pick up as well. FBZ, the TP out. Has someone got himself a stun? No, they don't. So, nope. That's where it ends. A two for one trade off. The big blink from the ES. Yep. Trying to pay off, but. Uh, um, is hard. The problem is there's just not enough damage on the side of Boom, especially when the Lina has all of his sucked away. He gets the full spell combo off on GPK. Yeah, you get him low, but he has a BKB. You're just never going to be able to catch up to him, even with the ulti pop from Troll to try and pump the damage. There's a Chen behind him as well. Pops the heal, pops the mech. There's just nothing you're really going to be able to do here to take him out under that uh, spell immunity cover. And also the Centaur ult he used while the Lina was stunned, just kind of reflex like, ah, oh, shit, my core is in trouble, let me help him out, but yeah. alas. He was he was too far away. Like, he was trying to get back in range so he can get the blink, but because they didn't see the gang coming, he was moving further to the east. Yeah. So Stampy was a repositioner. Roshan starting up now from Gambit. And uh, Boom have no real way to contest this or even know it, so what do they do? Send Centaur to the bottom lane, push the tier two. But they won't get it in time. There's not enough momentum. So that's exactly what, uh, like, the question was for Gambit. Like, can they, with an ex-initiation, now the Centaur has the Blink Dagger, like, who's going to make the best of their initiation? And yep. it definitely turned out to be Gambit. It just, uh, it, I feel like it's another thing that we continue to repeat, is when you have a core like a Razor, a Bristle, Alchemist, what have you, it's so much easier to play the game, because somebody mm -hmm. can just run in, you, get, you acquire a vision, you're able to mess with the enemy cores. They have to be afraid of you, not the reverse. And then your supports and your other cores are free to identify the key targets, right? Shaker's not going to feel pressure. Morphling can dive into the back lines. Both of these cores are just going to go full divide, right? And then Bat's like, oh, hey, I got a nice lasso now. And your Shaker and Chen can routinely find supports if they would like, control the troll, whatever they really want. E-Blade up on the morph. He's got Aegis, BKB fly, fly next up. item. Shashlo has the smoke break. Blink four, the fissure. Does not lock in high, but it won't matter. They blink lasso. Not exactly the target the Gambit was searching yeah. for. But uh, at the same time, Boom was smoking themselves, looking for a fight on the on the top lane. Yep. Also, man, I love the creeps FNG's got. The three that I would have selected as well. You've got the Swiftness Aura from the Hellbear, the Wolf Creep, and the Ice Ogre. So Chen, by walking around, represents how much healing? Yeah, represents 525 heal, um, plus the increase if you're nearby. 15 attack speed, 30% bonus damage, and Lich Armor. This is pretty good for a hero. You, you're like two heroes in one, effectively, so long as you micro efficiently. And I expect that FNG, he's been around the block a few times. I think he knows what he's doing. Makoto, that's a good setup on top lane. Shashlo, he just TP'd in underneath the tier one tower. Kez cute. They have enough damage to bring down the Bat Rider. He TP'd to the front end of the tower, and now, well, there will be a rebuttal. Hi, Dream of Soul. Yeah, Gambit hunting inside the Dire Jungle. It's the Observer Ward that's getting down. Like, Dream of Soul's like, we need wards. Yes. Should have worked out there was that Observer Ward being placed down if Gambit go for Roshan. And yeah, this is um, looking good for Gambit. Keep this is why Kez. you picked the morph into the troll. He's going to Glimmer Cape. 
and then begin his well, TP. Well, well, um, well. <laughs> that was that's that's not the button he was searching for. <laughs> He's got Glimmer up in two seconds time. Oh my God. And maybe with a false promise and some extra heals, he's able to survive a little bit longer. Yep, into the Glimmer. All right, try and All find right. him. Stampede also being used. That's down on the bottom lane. Because you've got Hyde trying to escape from GPK, but the Yule Scepter makes that almost Don't impossible to do. That's cute. Oh, 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 he jumps <laughs> he's, still he's still going. He's still going. And another turn. Oh, they got the dust. That's the second charge of dust they've had to commit to kill off this Oracle. <laughs> he's just like, oh, you know what? I'm not here. <laughs> it's like, I, wanted, I want to die, but you still can't make it work. Now he finally will. I love how Dream just, he just, as soon as bad team, he's like, you know what? I've had enough. I want to kill creeps. I'm wasting my time here. I'm trying to set records for the GPM. Oh, that's not GPK. Yeah, it's true. true. GPK is from the jungle. He's going to go for the Sanjin Yasha. I actually like this item. I used to hate it on Razor, but now that it gives like the healing amp as well with all the sustain on your team, plus the status resist, I've started to come around. I think this is quite nice. It's also so cheap. You already have the key items. Why not just get a little quality of life? I like this itemization as well from Lena, like getting into that Agatum Scepter next. Uh, in theory, it's nice, but... The problem I have is he's going to get bursted, and he's still making himself the target. He effectively has to play with flawless positioning, or he just gets killed. Yeah. Ags is nice. You can potentially kill a Morphling through his BKB. I just don't see Dream letting that happen. You see the Ags, you're like, okay, I'll play with 2000 HP, then that's fine. Maybe I do a little less damage, but I'm not going to die to this. Well, Dream is going to get the hell out of here. I'm trying to run towards the west. Where is he going? Uh, he's going to the graveyard. I'm I'm just saying I'm not buying the Battle Fury and the Sanjin Yasha build in this mm -hmm. sort of game, Tobes. It would make sense if he was able to keep actually, if he's, he's, ahead. he's not even going the SMY, like he's actually just leaving it as the Yasha and going BKB Basha now. Okay. Uh, he needs a BKB, right? But the problem is that you're still gonna be playing against a razor. He's talented for the static link damage still as expected. He's just gonna keep linking you. Nothing you can do to cleanse it. There's no Lotus. There's no uh, Force Staff even up yet on this Boom Squad, which hunting is again. something they're going to need. All for the 25 in a bounty rune. Oh. FBZ got that, but that's the only thing he'll claim. Actually, yeah, he has the Force on center. I like that decision. A lot of offlaners, I think, should do this more often because you need a Force. You need one. You're playing as Razor against Shaker. you got to be able to kite these guys. Somebody's got to grab one. Your supports Ooh. don't have the luxury. Morphling currently actually using himself, uh, using Hyde. <laughs> to just thunder strike oh, him down. Oh, he started oh. farming up, but oh, they break the Aegis Immortal, but there's not a secondary stun. And Chen's already ready to come to the bottom lane and try and fight this one out. Well, that Yule Scepter, a little bit of mistiming for the Fortune's end to connect, what? but it won't matter when Dream Cell can just kill off Dream. He had 1,500 HP, couldn't get anything off at the end of it all. That was about the best you could possibly hope for happening. Kill more through Aegis without like any real even commitment. Yep. Wow. And the only thing you technically lost was Disruptor because that's, and that's, still how, got it, the that's kill. how it began. Yep. You're putting money into the Troll Warlord speeding up the timing of the BKB. All right. Makoto's going to have that Ag soon. It'll be easier and easier to kill his Morph. Uh, once again, it. I will say Gambit I just feel like they could be doing more, right? I also love this from Grimacel. I got a double damage rune. All right, I need objectives. Let's just take that mid-tier one tower. Ward's up on the hillside. Earthshaker caught uh, out by FBZ. No Makoto more, gets the chain stun out. And Earthshaker, he goes down before he can do anything. Remember, you still got the double damage rune. The Centaur Stampede away. Not going to work thanks to the Yule. So the Dreamer Cell can get some extra distance. But 126 damage already stolen off from him. They're trying to keep up with the Razor. They hit him so hard. And they're going to find the kill. It's FBZ who takes this streak. And so much money. What? Even the Chen army. All those wonderful creeps you like, they're all lost. God damn, Gambit, what is your obsession with taking fights without an ally? They did this in the last game. Your, your morph is dead. He's dead. They, they plant high ground vision. This is like the worst scenario you could possibly be taking a fight. And and they just straight up ask for it. Bat's TPing uh, into the face. Bat's actually trying to take a fight of his own right now. <laughs> um, he's alone. He, he's got... Yeah, oh. yeah. He's, he is alone. Get the hell out of there, Shaq uh, And Yeah, I think FBZ finally cut the telegrams. Like, okay, guys, like uh, we should be fighting this one. Follow the Firefly. He's down deeper. TP is available. He'll begin it. Doesn't do the blink. And they actually... He has to blink oh, now, but he has no... Now. Yeah, he's, he's got BTs. He's got BTs available. So just use the TP scroll, then the BTs. So it's all okay. BKB on troll. This game has changed. And yeah, watch this. First off, Centaur's getting initiated on Y. There's a high ground vision. Two... 
Centaur gets the kill on Razor. You don't really need a repeat to understand that Gambit just got smashed, and their gold lead that seemed so formidable that I almost was calling the game for them has dropped <laughs> off a cliff, much like a roller coaster. And uh, yeah, that is always kind of disheartening to see. As a CIS fan, as an unbiased caster, I just like good Dota. <laughs> oh god, Centaur is going to be completely unkillable soon. They're going to give him Craggy, I believe. Actually, no, that will probably go to the Disruptor, right, so he can get his ulti off. Either way, they're getting their survivability. The Aghanim Scepter, so welcome to that pure. 850 pop from the Lina. And they actually gave it to the Oracle. They, so Oracle is able to survive a lot longer now. So maybe that e does that E-Blade pop, is it still enough to, to one-hit the Oracle? Oh, no. He's too far behind it, now, And right? now there's a Glimmer Cape too, right? Plus he'll be playing so far back because of the Aether Lens. Mm -hmm. right, you, you've really shot yourself in the foot here, Gambit. Maybe even the ankle too. Um, you're going to take a fight, target. the vision's Blink's on forward, hits three man on the fissure, follow-up is coming, Centaur, they got him controlled for the Stop moment, the and maybe no false promise, they just break him free, the Centaur stomping over an excess vampire, he'll be able to kill him off, of course the Oracle did get popped, but he got everything he needed to off before this happened. The BKB starting to wear off. Troll still got his. The wall is up, and now GPK has to burn his too. And it's just trying to disengage with another three-man fissure. Wow. Perfectly connecting. Dreamer Cell will fall. And Lena TPing out in the fog of war. They go oh, the stun! And the Echo Slam Axis Vampire didn't even realize he hit with the first one. And Oh, and now we turn back the other way. It's about time. Gambit finally took a fight. <laughs> they were five. They immediately initiate. Yeah, Centaur's not the right target, but it forces the Oracle ult. He's looking forwards. Boom. Dream pounces. E blade W. He's dead immediately. And then it's so simple for them to do the exact same thing to troll as the cooldowns come back up. Well, why couldn't you do this 10 minutes ago? <laughs> like, look just, how simple it is. They just needed excess vampire to lead the way. Two three man fishes the, really control up 100 this fight. 100 to zero. It, it, it's insane. And this is this is what we're talking about. The reach advantage from Gambit is still incredibly strong if they look to utilize it. Oh, they found another target too. Like, <laughs> he's down here. He's down here for the 30-minute runes. Like that's uh, he, he managed to pick up one of them. And once you get this Lincoln's on morph, all of a sudden the Lena item build starts to look a bit weak because that you get BKB off. Lena can't actually do anything to get the ult on you mm -hmm. through that BKB, even with that piercing ability, because there's no other form of a BKB single target spell. Uh, looks like the Disruptor Ags may be what Boom need to change this game for the better for them, but he's yeah. still 3,000 away. Next Aegis will spawn in 40 seconds. I think you get that on Gambit, and hopefully Dream grabs it once again and uses it just a little bit better than last time. Maybe look to go high ground. And wow, Satanic soon on GPK as well. Again. Excess Vampire feels very much like bait, but Yule Scepter up, Light Striker right. They just brought the Razor in, thanks to the Chen, starts the Static Link up. Oh, Everyone's got Yule Scepters, and now Dreamer Cell, Stampede, and BKB away from the Static Link. I was also trying to get FBZ out of the out of the reach of, of Dream and Sharshlow, but that won't happen either. Creep Wave going mid, no Centaur, but Roshan is up in nine seconds. I think Gambit probably have a timer as they head immediately towards it as it spawns. Uh, Two. Yeah, Dream's gonna look one. one and... Hi. Oh, no! Oh, bye! No! Oh, wait. Hi! <laughs> He's like, no. I, I, I get you vampires keeping a timer. He's like, no, no, no. Trust me on this one. <laughs> it's spawning. Dream hits so, so hard and fast, and with, with Lincoln's fear protecting him too, he's got to feel very immortal. You've already got 20% status resist on this. Like, GPK is straight up unkillable because you have the Chen plus heal aura. Now you, you have a Paladin sword as well for the regen amp. You're going to have Satanic and SNY for like 40% status resist combined, and a cheese. So you cannot die. Morphling has an Aegis and a BKB Lincoln's. Mm -hmm. It, this is what it comes to. When your cores have this innate survivability, it's so much easier to play the fights. And it'll help them go high ground, especially against these um, high ranged backliners on the side of Boom. Almost a basher on Troll, but I just don't know if that's going to be relevant. Dream Cell here. It's Kez Cute that's really got to be cautious. I think he needs some more plus HP items, because right now he's still dead in Need Blade combo if his Glimmer's down. Can I buy a Bracer? <laughs> like just, just a single Bracer. Something. 
full pipe now also purchased by the Chen. They really can tank through so much. Yep, this is why Alan had a little freak out when he saw <gasps> 19th pick Chen. It is pretty good. This hero should be first twoed. I think any game it is available. It's been busted for almost a decade now. And FNG is showing you why. They're on the hunt. Shashlo takes the disguise. Troll Warlord Echo Slam instantly stands over on him. The lasso, they caught the Oracle. In the back line, is going to be able to get away as well after doing this. The false promise still comes in, comes in but Dream has already popped Kezcute. Buybacks are coming thick and fast. Structure up in the area to get that storm up instantly. There's no other choice unless he's just going to buy back and also fight. He is already down. A quick little glimmer, but it cannot stop Dream from killing off Makoto. And this is really the game. Yeah. That really is the game. They're dead for way too long. GG well played. Gambit, after game one was really boom out playing them, this time they stuck to their timings and they just seemed to have the upper hand throughout this entire game. Once that quick point came, like it was always a build yeah. up and you're wondering when's that first mark gonna happen and then straight up never went back. I just wanna see them find that opportunity earlier, Toby. It's the second game in a row, they've got this big lead. Mm -hmm. And a second game in a row, they sit on it for it, way it too to, long. It took to 22 minutes. They had a small bump at the 29-minute mark, and then it's straight back their way. But that was the like their first fight. They crushed it. It was the first time they actually took that big engage. They had had all their core items up for some time. I look at Boom, and I think, well, what went wrong for them? A Battle Fury troll rush mm -hmm. when your mid player is suffering? It just yeah. you, You're on the back foot. Boom, you guys just kind of crushed game one on the backs of your aggression. You're raxing at 25 minutes. I want to see you play to this. It just really feels like in this tournament, in this meta, the squad that's looking to press is the one that's going to have the edge. You've got to be making moves. And if you're not willing to do that, you're at the mercy of your enemy. And you're hoping they make mistakes instead of playing a win. That's also the mentality just to watch of a, of a team like Boom. Like, you're, you're here at the minor. Obviously, you're going up against, for, for me, like, what, what was one of the favorites? Like, Gambit, yeah, mm. for me, is still one of the favorites. After game one, they looked like they shouldn't be a favorite and looked like Boom was just, like, completely just on a whole other level. But Gambit mm. have woken up. They came back for game two, or maybe Boom need to just reevaluate where their mind is at. Uh, coming out of the, the hype, they had to be like, they were smiling, they were giggling through the draft of game two. Like, they oracle trolled, and like, ha, <laughs> um, ha, Now... I sense of reality has to kick back in again. I like the Oracle Troll, but at the same time, it just like plays into the Razor, right? It, it's a cool, it's a cute combo. I like it. It's a really nice compliment. It counters the bat, but just didn't... Again, you know what it comes down to? We what? say all this, he bought a Battle Fury, Toby. If he goes for fighting items, they kill this morph a couple more times. Maybe this is different. It's hard to evaluate because we're just not sure. Uh, they didn't get what they wanted out of the pick. I, you get it. Summary of everything we just said, fight, fight, <laughs> fight in game.